imported 8 million lines of code. Uh, this statistic is obtained from the OLO website. And uh, most of the code is based on C++, C, and Objective-C. Uh, the NCC code is more related to WebKit 2 API bindings, and the Objective-C is more related to Apple uh, Cocoa bindings. Uh, the project itself now contains around 300 uh, committed and 130 reviewers. Uh, this, this can vary um, much or a long time. So, for example, right now there are, are around 100 active contributors to WebKit after the Blink has been forked, but uh, there is still a good number of people around. And uh, as of November of last year, it contained about, around 40% of browsers' market share. And the uh, actual numbers uh, are now after the, the Blink fork. Uh, Safari itself is uh, around 8.5% of uh, market share. And the whole Chrome ecosystem uh, owns around 40%. Uh, this is the ticket where it took from uh, Stats Counter, I mean, I guess. It's a website that uh, makes this kind of calculations. And uh, speaking about lines of code, uh, as you can see from this time frame, also took from Olo. Uh, since the project started, it has acquired a lot of uh, lines of code. And uh, on 2005, when WebKit was open sourced, it started really to have uh, different kinds of contributions. Uh, the current code uh, not only contains the, the WebKit engine itself, but a bunch of different build system files, uh, different ports, and platform-specific code. And uh, you can see uh, when the Blink project was forked, there is a slight, slight uh, diminution on the number of lines of code. And that was due because uh, uh, the WebKit folks has removed everything that was related to Chrome pro Chromium ports. And uh, on this ne next graph, you can see the number of commits per month. And again, uh, when you see after the blink has been forked, the amount of commits has decreased a lot, but it's still a very uh, huge amount of commits. So for example, you can see from the last 30 days, it has around 1,500 uh, commits. And uh, the same applies for the number of contributors. Uh, before that, uh, there were around 303 uh, active contributors, and now this number has decreased to around 86. Speaking about the number of active contributors, um, the same behavior appears on the graph, uh, as, we sp uh, as I spoke earlier. And uh, you can see that there are the top 10 contributors, uh, Apple, Google, Nokia, Research in Motion, uh, Igalia, Intel, Samsung, uh, the universe of Zagat, Adobe, and Torch Mobile are the hugest contributors to the project. Uh, there are other companies uh, uh, contributing to WebKit, but uh, I would say that these are the top 10 most, uh, that most contribute to, to WebKit. Uh, this information was obtained from a website called bitergia.com, and uh, in the beginning of this year, they made some very good stati statistics about the project. I mean, from number of contributors to top 10 companies and everything else. Uh, I will show the, the link later on the presentation. So uh, now speaking about Blink, uh, what is Blink? It's basically a fork of WebKit as of April 2013. And uh, it contains only a single port, which is called Chromium. Uh, it's important to say here that Chromium is not a standalone uh, port. Uh, by that I mean you cannot run Blink just by compiling Blink itself. Blink requires uh, content layer implementation uh, associated with that. Uh, in comparison to WebKit, you have, for example, the mini browser, which is a very rudimentary browser implementation that is contained on WebKit source code. So it pretty much contains everything that you need to, uh, to obtain a, a browser window on the screen. So uh, Blink also contains a custom uh, JavaScript engine. It's called V8. 
uh, WebKit uses JavaScript core. And uh, one interesting aspect of this is that uh, when the project was forked, uh, the, the whole, the bo both projects, they removed every API, for example, WebKit removed every API that was related to V8 bindings to, to, their, to WebCore, and the same has been applied to, to Blink, so it has removed everything that was binding to JavaScript core. Uh, Blink is based on a multi, sorry? Uh, I would say it would be more like political. Uh, I mean, Apple uh, hosts the whole JavaScript core implementation and uh, Google hosts the V8 one. And uh, by the time WebKit was a single community, uh, it, it was uh, becoming harder and harder to sustain both uh, implementations because uh, Google guys wanted to have more uh, inner uh, implementation code from, from V8 inside WebCore. <coughs> On the other hand, uh, uh, the Apple guys didn't want it to make that kind of binding too much strict because they want to support JavaScript core as well. So it's more like a political decision than then. So uh, Blink uh, is, is based on a multiprocessor architecture. Basically, you have the browser process and uh, one to N renderer processes. Uh, this was best explained on my colleague Adenilson's presentation earlier today. And uh, basically it differs from the WebKit2 API, uh, multiprocess architecture. This is also another reason why the projects were quite different. Uh, but this is not really the subject for this talk now. But of course, if you, we can discuss this later. Um, Blink contains different goals when compared to WebKit. Uh, basically, uh, Google wants greater freedom in implementing web core features. Uh, by that, I mean they, they want to, to make experimental features uh, more uh, becoming available to the public quite faster than uh, on WebKit side. So, for example, all the experimental features uh, that were available on WebKit when the when the Blink port when the Blink fork happened. Uh, one of the priority things that uh, Blink developers did was uh, modifying all the, the, uh, the runtime uh, features to, to become, uh, I, sorry, uh, in the past they were uh, enabled on compile time. There was a flag there, you, you could enable or disable on compile time. But on Blink, uh, you can enable that on runtime. There is a page called chrome.2. I can show you. Uh, if you go to Chrome, there is a there is this page where all the uh, experimental features can be enabled and disabled on runtime. So this is uh, very interesting because such thing is not uh, available on the WebKit port. You have to compile the whole project to make that. Uh, it also Avoid, uh, wants to avoid vendor prefixes. Uh, this is important because if you are a web developer, you want to get rid of using polyfills on your JavaScript code to support, let's say, all the, the available browser vendors. And uh, on the other hand, it's, uh, it's very challenging because all these uh, CSS properties that has vendor prefixes, uh, they have this for a reason, for example, uh, usually the, the, the standard for, for that property is not yet finished, it's still on, on ongoing development, and uh, that's why every browser doesn't want to, to get responsibility on, on saying that, okay, so this property is fully implemented in, in my engine. So that's why they use the, the vendor prefixes. But uh, uh, the Google guys want to get rid of that. They want to force every browser to implement the features straight from what the standard uh, uh, says. Uh, there is also a lighter code base. Uh, most of the, the code that was reminiscent from the WebKit was removed. I mean, 
they have cl uh, cleaned a lot of different build system files. So, for example, on WebKit, you had CMake, QMake, uh, Auto Tools, and uh, a bunch of other uh, build system files that were, you know, uh, huge to maintain. And uh, the Blink has removed all of that. A lot of platform specific code as well and port specific code. So all the QT bindings, all the EFL bindings, and so on were removed. Uh, Blink only contains the, uh, the SCIA uh, bindings, and the, the SCIA itself is hosted on the Chromium project as a subdirectory. Uh, also, uh, from, the, from the, let's say, from the insights that uh, I obtained it from the Blink.com conference that happened last month, uh, I would say that the, for the future, uh, the intention is to remove all code that is not related to strictly layout and rendering uh, code out of Blink and move that to the Chromium project. Right now, for example, uh, Blink is hosted inside the Chromium repository as a subdirectory. Uh, if, if you check the, the Chromium source code, you can see, for example, here, um, source, then you have third party and WebKit. It's still named it as WebKit because uh, there are a lot of third party dependent code that uh, depends on that specific name to be, to be used. But uh, this is where the Blink code resides at this moment. So yeah, uh, speaking about lines of code, uh, I'm taking this graph from March 2013 where the cleanup starts. And as of April, uh, the Blink project was forked. So they started cleaning up the code before uh, the uh, public announcement. And since then, uh, the number of lines of code has been stabilized at, at around 2.5 million lines of code. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, we can't say, for example, that new code is being is not being added, but in the, in the contrary, there is a, a, still a lot of code that is being removed, reminiscent from WebKit, but also new code. So one thing leverages the other. So here in this graph, uh, we, we see the different uh, hierarchical status inside both projects. Uh, the first level of hierarchy is the general contributor. So if you are a developer that wants to contribute to WebKit and Blink, uh, you are entitled to that. And, but this can also mean uh, people with some special uh, uh, powers. Uh, so let's say that on WebKit, for example, if you want to get automatic, automatically uh, CC'd on a Bugzilla bug, or if you want to run the early warning system uh, for your patch, you, ha you can get this uh, contributor status. And on Blink, also, you have the special status for people that wants to have access to the tri-job system. I will talk about this uh, early warning system and tri-jobs later, so you guys can understand it better. And the next level is the committer level. Uh, the special feature here is that the, the, this person has the ability to commit patches. So after your patch gets reviewed by someone, you can uh, make it you can commit it by yourself. You have the authority to do that. And later on, uh, we have the review on WebKit site and the owner on the Blink site. Basically, they do the same, uh, but the difference is that on WebKit site, the reviewer is more scoped to a feature. So let's say an uh, area of knowledge. So if you know about CSS or uh, graphics, or uh, multimedia, you will, you will be specialized on one of these subjects, you will be a reviewer for that. In the other hand, on the Blink side, it's more specific to a directory. So let's take, for example, this uh, source and core directory. Uh, if you see, every directory on Blink has a file called owners. And if you open that, uh, you will see a lot of emails that uh, are related to people that uh, contain ownership on the directory. So if you want to get your patch reviewed or 
uh, acknowledged by someone, you have to check out for one of these people listed here. Uh, so uh, in this graph, I try to resume uh, a general uh, path for submitting patches inside WebKit. The first thing you have to do is either create a new bug or select uh, an existing bug on inside WebKit Bugzilla. Uh, this is important because uh, everything is, uh, is tracked in WebKit. Every, every feature that you want to implement or bug fix you want to do is tracked on Bugzilla. So after doing this, uh, you will have a, a, an open bug associated with you, and you can start uh, creating and building your patch. Uh, after you have a, a, a patch done, you can upload it to Bugzilla, and uh, when this happens, the early warning system takes action. Uh, what it does basically is a set of bots uh, that that uh, will pick up the patch, apply it on top of the repository, build it, and test it. Uh, each bot will be uh, associated with a specific platform. So let's say there will be the Mac bot, the Windows bot, Linux bot, and uh, this, this whole process uh, happens automatically. So uh, after this uh, bots run, they will report to either by saying that, okay, everything is fine, or uh, there is a problem in the build process, or there is a problem in the uh, testing process, and uh, whenever this happens, there will be a log associated with the error that happened. So the, the developer can, can see what went wrong. Uh, if everything goes well, then the next step would be requesting for a review flag. If you check on uh, WebKit Bugzilla, let me just open one here. I will open an existing bug just for exemplification. So, uh, let me just log in. Yep. Not this one. One that has a patch. Let's see. Yep. Okay. So you see here, this is what the early warning system is all about. So you can see a lot of different bots here, and each of them will get a result. If it's green, it says the everything went okay. If it's not green, something wrong happened. And uh, if you check on details, you can see here there are two different kinds of flags, the review flag and the commit QA flag. And that's what we are talking about on the, on the slides. So uh, you ask, after you get your patch uh, all, all okay by the early warning system, you set up the uh, review flag. This will notify uh, every reviewer that is associated with your patch. Uh, there is a script inside WebKit that automatically searches for the corresponding people that will uh, be the best uh, option to, to review a patch. How this happens, it uh, checks out the git log and git blame for people associated with that specific part of the code that you are working with. So if uh, someone will review a patch and if everything is okay, he will assign an uh, error plus flag like this. After you get this done, you can uh, request for commit QA flag, which is basically the same. Uh, you have the option, for example, after uh, you have your patch reviewed to manually commit your patch. If you have SVN uh, login and everything set up, Otherwise, you can just use commit QE, which is also another bot that will pick up your patch again, apply it on top of head, build it, test it once more, and uh, if every, everything's okay, he automatically lands your patch. So in the end, uh, you can see here, uh, uh, let's see, 
here, you can see this commit was made by commit Kiwi. And uh, it automatically uh, fills the uh, change log lines like patch by someone, review with by someone else. This is all being done automatically by the bots. Uh, uh, WebKit and Blink, uh, they don't really associate patches with, uh, with the author uh, uh, namespace. Uh, they, they most usually, if you want to know who really made that patch, you have to look on the change log. So in this case, you have to search for these specific lines and they will be always present on every WebKit uh, patch. If you see here, there is always some uh, revealed by, so there is always, always someone that will review a patch. If the patch was applied by yourself, so it was a manual commit, there is no patch by. But if it was uh, done by commit QE, then you can be sure you always will find uh, patch by, the patch by line. This is done automatically, there is a script that picks up the, the committer name and put that. So, uh, in order to become, sorry? Which is your primary system, Git or uh, the, the main repository of WebKit is based on SVN, but uh, most, most developers, they just use the Git SVN uh, tool to, to, to implement, to develop. I mean, uh, SVN is used because WebKit is a very, old project and by the time as, so, uh, Git was, wasn't even an option. So they still sustain SVN, but uh, most of the development is made on Git. So in order to become a committer, uh, you have to have at least around 25 revealed patches. And uh, by revealed patches, I mean, uh, there are some patches on WebKit that doesn't really require reveal. Uh, if, you, if you do a patch, for example, uh, there are the layout tests inside WebKit. And if you just want to update some test result, you don't actually require review from someone. You can just uh, commit that by yourself. So uh, you also have to have good judgment and understanding of the project uh, policies. By that, I mean, basically, you can't do whatever you want on the project, like commit a random file or, or anything. Uh, you have to have good collaboration skills. Uh, by that I mean you have to be communicative on the RSC channels, on the mailing lists, on Bugzilla comments. And uh, you, are, you have to be open to, to help someone that uh, is, is doing some work related with what you have done in the past already. And um, the nom nomination itself uh, re requires at least three reviewers to uh, acknowledge your nomination. There is one guy that will nominate and two others that will acknowledge. And uh, this whole process happens inside a private mailing list that is only visible to reviewers. Uh, some people might ask, why, this why is that, let's say, closed to the public? Uh, but you have to remember that WebKit and Blink projects are mostly uh, driven by companies and uh, sometimes uh, there are, let's say, opinions, different opinions about someone that uh, might be harmful if they, if they talk outside of it. So they try to keep it uh, closed. And uh, in order to become a reviewer, you know, a reviewer contains more complex responsibilities. So uh, one of the things that, although it's not a perfect measure, but uh, they have to have around 100 reviewed patches. So this means uh, the guy has to be very serious understanding of, of the source code. By that I mean, uh, for example, the best examples of reviewers are people that uh, implemented the whole new feature inside WebKit or that has sustained the development of a certain uh, feature for a long time or has uh, fixed a serious crash on the system uh, and, and so. And uh, the person has also had to informally review it already other people's patches. So for example, you are not yet a formal reviewer, 
but if you have already uh, gave some suggestions to someone on the Bugzilla comments or helped someone else to, to fix a uh, bug in, in his patch, his or her patch. So uh, this all is taken into account when uh, the review nomination happens. Uh, you have to ensure that uh, reviewed patches follows project policies. So WebKit is a project that contains very strict policies for submitting patches. Uh, I, I haven't spoken uh, previously, but for example, if we want to submit a patch, you have to f run a script inside WebKit that will check for uh, if the changelog is properly being written, uh, if the coding, coding style uh, respects what WebKit uh, is, follows and everything else. So this is a very strict system and uh, you have to guarantee that the other people's patches follows that. And uh, of course, you have to have exceptional judgment on source code changes. Uh, I mean, you can simply accept any patch from someone else because it's related to you or if you just, let's say, trust what that person's judgment. You have to personally review line by line and guarantee that that feature is what the person has intended to implement. Uh, th this is an uh, important aspect of WebKit. Uh, it's a very happy community and uh, we have this uh, place on the web called webkitmemes.tumblr.com which contains a, a bunch of different memes associated with the daily work on WebKit. And this is very important uh, uh, notice. Uh, I, I think this is general for every uh, open source community. If you put a patch for a review, but don't ping anyone or IC channel or a mailing list or doesn't CC anyone on the Bugzilla, uh, you will have a bad time. By that bad time, I mean you can uh, wait for hours, days, weeks, even months for someone to review your patch because nobody will just stop by and, oh, okay, this patch needs to reveal. Uh, as you may know, WebKit is a very large and complex project and the reviewers are always busy doing something, so uh, unless you ping them and notify them, hey, I have this patch, please reveal, uh, you, it can take a lot of time to, to get your patch landed. Uh, so speaking about Blink, Blink contains a very similar uh, aspect for submitting patches when compared to WebKit. The main difference here is that it uses two different websites uh, for managing things. One, one is the Chromium issues, which is, the most, which is most close to what Bugzilla does. The difference is uh, Chromium issues is scoped only to tracking uh, bug comments, uh, issue comments. It doesn't really track uh, the, patch, uh, uh, the patch flow. Uh, so the first thing you have to do is either create or select and uh, bug inside Chromio issues, and then you can start developing the patch. After having your patch done, you upload it to code review, and uh, the association to the Chromio issue is done by on the changelog. You can see here on the, on Blink. Uh, for example, on this patch. Uh, there, is, there will be always this line, bug equals a number, which associates with the Chromium issue number. So this is how they keep track of everything. Uh, after uploading your patch, uh, it will be run by the tribots, which are much more like the, the early warning system on WebKit. There will be specific bots for specific platforms, and uh, they will all uh, pick up your patch, apply it on top of head, build it, test it, and if everything goes well, they will be green. So this is on WebKit and let me open something here. So if you see, here are, uh, this is the code reveal. And uh, when you submit a patch, you have the tribot here also with the same system. If everything goes well, it's green, otherwise it's red. 
After that, your patch is ready for review, and uh, you can ask someone uh, to review a patch. And uh, if the person uh, acknowledges your patch, it will just write down, uh, looks good to me inside the patch. Let me see if I can find some, some here. Here. Uh, so for example, uh, this patch has passed all the, the tribots and uh, some owner had just put it, looks good to me. This is read by some bot that uh, will, will say, okay, so this, this patch is ready for commit. You can see that uh, the line for the commit, the, the rectangle got green, which says, okay, it's ready to go. So after this point, you can either manually uh, uh, commit your patch or use the commit QA bot to, the, to do that for you. If you want to, to make your patch committed, you can just check out this box here. I will, I will not do this here, otherwise it will create some problem for the guy. Uh, some some uh, interesting aspects here is that uh, after the patch is landed, it notifies the Chrome U issues. So uh, there will be a special comment there made by the commit QE saying, okay, so uh, this, these issues is ready to be fi fi uh, close it because the, the commit has been made. And uh, the commit QE bot, for example, if it takes time for you between uh, uh, uploading your patch to the code review and uh, obtaining the review status, there might be changes of the code that uh, uh, can, can make the, the, the application of your patch on the, on the repository uh, impossible. So let's say some, uh, you made modification on a certain file and uh, someone else has already modified that. So uh, what CommitQ does is, is try three times to make this uh, appliance on the repository. If it fails, then it, it will warn you and you will have to submit a new patch uh, with that fixed. So, uh, the, the process for gaining uh, status in Blink, uh, especially for committer status, is pretty much similar to what WebKit does and uh, can be sped up if you are already a WebKit committer. So for example, you haven't uh, committed any patch on Blink, but you have already, let's say, 30 or 40 patches uh, committed on WebKit, they will, they will take that into account and can nominate you. Uh, the nomination process is very similar as well. There is a closed list, a committer's uh, list inside uh, Chromium, and uh, someone will nominate you and two, two other people will have to back up, will back your, back your support. And uh, the same applies for owner. Uh, the process for ownership is uh, pretty much similar to what WebKit does, but uh, two important aspects here had to be taken into account. The person has to be a Chromium project member for at least six months. And uh, for example, if you want to take ownership on a specific directory, you have to make, already have made modifications on that directory, like sending a patch to a specific file inside of it, at least from the 19 earlier days. So they really take that into account. And of course, have bandwidth to, con to contribute to the project, I mean, reviewing someone else's patches, uh, giving back support for the patches you have, for the features you were previously implementing, so if something wrong happens, you have to give support for that and everything else. So, uh, speaking about the Linux kernel development, uh, from what I have seen, uh, uh, again, saying I'm not an expert on uh, Linux kernel development, so please help me if I'm speaking something wrong here. Uh, we have the vanilla releases that are made personally by Linux, and uh, we have two other more releases which are the stable and the experimental ones, and uh, these releases happens on a two to three months basis. Uh, compared to WebKit, WebKit and Blink itself, uh, they don't have a specific uh, release date or, or versions. If you want to check the latest version of WebKit, 
you just need to clone the repository and the last uh, release from the SVN will be the, the release. Uh, these two projects, they are more associated with the target browsers. So for example, WebKit has Safari as the target browser, mostly because uh, Apple is the main uh, contributor to WebKit, and Blink has the Chromium browser as, as the target. So uh, both of these projects, for example, uh, uh, WebKit contains the, uh, the Safari contains the night, night nightly builds. So every night there is a new build with the head of the repository associated. And uh, but from time to time, uh, uh, Safari releases new versions with new features as well. The same applies for Chromium. There is a there are milestones. For example, I believe now that. Chrome uh, is on the milestone 31, uh, and 32 will be released very soon. And uh, uh, all, these, all these milestones are related to new features that are implemented also on the web engine side. Uh, the patch lifetime is, can be relatively quick for minor fixes. So for example, if you have a uh, very simple bug fix, one line bug fix on the kernel, uh, this whole process can be very quick, or it can take ages or years for large and controversial changes on the kernel. And again, compared to WebKit and Blink, uh, they usually have faster triaging times, mostly because uh, the bots help very much checking if your change will uh, break something in a specific platform, for example. Uh, so the, the process for submitting a patch starts with the design step. Uh, this is often uh, done uh, individually, so doesn't really involve community. So if you work for a company that, uh, let's say, uh, doesn't want to get public what they are doing, they will be submitting patches to the kernel, but they won't be saying, okay, we are implementing this specific feature. Then you get the early reveal. Uh, so usually what, what people do is get the patches uh, uh, uploaded to some mailing list, a related mailing list. And uh, after that, uh, it will get revealed from people. And uh, if some uh, subsystem maintainer will uh, take attention to your patch, it will, uh, and agrees with the patch, it will apply it under his or her uh, repository, own repository. And uh, after this step, the subsystem maintainer itself will also guarantee uh, there will be another round of reviews on your patch. And uh, if everything goes right and the patch is accepted by Linux, it goes into mainline. Uh, this is usually the, the information that uh, I have obtaining from checking out how the, the whole process happens inside kernel. And uh, finally, there is the release uh, step, which is basically uh, the developer should take responsibility for the code. So if something breaks after his changes, or uh, if, uh, if some specific driver stops functioning, the developer has the responsibility to either roll back the patch or up upload some new uh, patch to fix that issue. And uh, now we have we make some comparisons. So for example, on the design step, uh, WebKit and Blink usually promotes a more open uh, openness in the development uh, process. So for example, if you are a company or some individual that wants to implement a new feature, the first thing uh, you, you can do is uh, send an email to the, to the WebKit ma the developers mailing list saying, uh, intend, I intend to implement this or that feature, like CSS shader, or I want to remove this because it's deprecated. Usually people uh, publish their intentions before sending new patches. And when they publish the, uh, their intentions, they will get feedback from the community. So for, like, for example, there will be someone saying, okay, cool, nice that you are doing that. I can help you if you want to. Or, oh, hey, uh, I already tried to do that in the past and it didn't work. So, it's uh, faster to, to, to gather this kind of feedback from the community. And uh, on the early review step, uh, it's, uh, uh, one, one thing that uh, really uh, is important on the WebKit is that everything is tracked inside Bugzilla. 
And uh, the same applies for Blink, which, con which has the code review and the Chromio issues. It's a, a very, both are very good tools to track history and to separate issues from in a logical scope. So, for example, uh, if you have a fix for something, you, uh, if you want to know everything that happened to that, you can just check out the Bugzilla comments to see what people have done in that subject. Uh, also, we have the addition of the WebKit's early warning system and tribots. Uh, this pretty much easifies the work for the developer to test it on different platforms. So you don't actually need to compile your code manually on ARM architecture or Intel architecture or on a specific uh, device. You can just submit your patch and uh, the tribots will try to, to get that for you. So on the wider review, and merging to mainline, uh, the comparison I could do is that uh, a reviewer or owner uh, acknowledgement is usually enough. I mean, uh, usually there is only one person that will be involved plus the developer uh, on, on the process of getting the patch into mainline. Uh, in, in speaking about Linux kernel, uh, you as the developer has to first submit it to some maintainer that could be a driver maintainer or a sub-maintainer and uh, then this maintainer will send it to another, to another, to another until uh, it gets to a subsystem maintainer which finally uh, will send that to Linux. And uh, this, this whole hierarchy is, uh, demands some time for, for patches to, to go up on the hierarchy and uh, this can be quite faster inside WebKit and Blink development. Uh, also speaking about integration, uh, as I said earlier, uh, every patch that is sent to the Bugzilla, okay, uh, every patch that is sent to Bugzilla automatically is tested against the repository, so it tries to apply first and build everything on different platforms, so this process happens faster on, on these projects. Uh, like, testing is also on the fly. When the, when the bots build and uh, compile your code, uh, they will also run some tests. There are a diversity of tests. There are layout tests and some unit tests inside WebKit and Blink that are, are run. So uh, speaking about the hierarchy model, uh, as I said earlier, it's, it's way more simpler inside WebKit. Uh, you know, Usually, for example, on, on the kernel, if you, if you have some patch that touches two or more different uh, places you, that are maintained by two or more uh, different uh, maintainers, also have to get some sort of ACID by uh, flag inside your changelog of your patch. Um, this is not really the case for WebKit and Blink. And uh, one thing that I found really interesting uh, on this project is that Getting patches inside depends uh, on finding the right maintainer. So you can get pretty lost if you, if you don't know the right person to talk, up, talk to. And uh, this also happens inside WebKit and Blink. So uh, as the final thoughts, I would say that all these three projects, they are uh, open source. They are strict in terms of the development process. I mean, WebKit has a way of doing things. Blink has a way of doing things and so for Linux. And the uh, hierarchy levels are based on meritocracy, which is a very good thing. <laughs> and what is awesome about WebKit and, and Blink projects are the automated patch triaging system, which is something that I, I would really love to see inside Linux kernel development. I mean, if there would be such a place that where I could just upload my patch and have it run by different uh, platforms and, and testing uh, automatically it would be I think it would be a good thing for the community and also uh, it has a, a bug tracking system and also history and I really don't know if there is such similar thing inside uh, the Linux kernel community I know that the the mailing lists are very much active in that sense but uh, if it, it would be really cool if we could have some specific place to find the tracking history for some feature implementation or bug fix. 
So yeah, now it's a proper time for questioning. I know uh, I have talked a lot about the different pro these two projects, and uh, please ask anything. Yep. Uh, is it feasible for people who don't do it professionally to get any status on NFT properties? So your question was, uh, if I am a, a let's say an in individual that wants to gather a hierarchy level status on this project, yes, it's pretty doable. Uh, although, yes, but I mean, in practice, uh, it looks like it's quite heavy and you really need a full time. Yes, yes. Uh, to be quite honest, you, you won't see as much individual contributors to WebKit and Blink projects as you might see on the Linux kernels. Uh, you will see a lot of people that are linked to some company or uh, uh, let, yeah, I, I mean, you, you won't find individual contributors, people with, uh, let's say, at Gmail or at something individual there. They will, you will see a lot of uh, Samsung.com, Intel.com, Apple.com emails associated. Keep track, yes. So, yes, it's possible, but it's going to be really fast. Yep. Yeah, um, I think I can maybe even insist on that. Um, so, that in the Linux server community, there's no, there's no user administration. You know, it's, it's more scalable, I think, because of that. And I totally agree with you, it's good to have your know, own operating system and try and go to that screen. Uh, so your question was, uh, is, it re is it possible to avoid all this mechanism to submit a patch? Yeah, uh, Okay. So uh, speaking about WebKit, uh, mainly uh, almost everything that is related to WebKit is uh, hosted by Apple. Uh, they host, for example, the Bugzilla, they host the WebKit site, and uh, some, uh, some bots that from the early warning system are also hosted by Apple. But for example, uh, if you are talking about specific bots, so let's say here, uh, the Qt bot. Uh, it was hosted by DJ, which is uh, uh, the, the, the main company behind Qt. Uh, they were hosting it until three weeks ago. <laughs> the bot's not available anymore. But uh, so uh, if you if you have a platform specific uh, implementation, you will be let's say responsible for hosting that bot to to run all the tests. But everything else is paid by Apple, and uh, Apple is doing that because it has a lot of interest in keeping the community uh, running and, and facilitating everything for the developers. And the same applies for, for Blink. I mean, most of the infrastructure is hosted by Google, but specific tribots are also run by independent companies. Uh, Google invests a lot of money in that because it wants to do so. It's important for them and, uh, uh, you know, uh, for the developers, it really uh, fast uh, the development time for, for getting the patch submitted and until getting it to mainline. It, it, it's very fine. Someone else? So, 
Okay, so uh, speaking, uh, since uploading the patch to get it uh, on mainline? No, I mean, uh, can anyone just go and... Uh, yes, yes, a anyone is free to open a, a Bugzilla account. It's free, you can go there and uh, register. And uh, the, the public RSC channels are open. You can go to freenode.org and uh, uh, there is a WebKit channel inside there. And uh, there is also a Blink channel. It's, it's a very open community, you can just go there, drop by. The mailing list, the public mailing list are, are, are open, uh, like they are hosted um, on Mailman. So for example, there is this uh, WebKit Dell uh, mailing list, the Blink Dev mailing list, they are open. The, the mailing list that are not open are the committers and the reviewers on, which uh, as I explained earlier, uh, they use for nominations. So. But besides that, everything else is open and free for anyone to register. So yep. coming back to the first you know, patch or whatever, I guess the, the first question would be what, what to work on. So is, is there like a sort of list of unassigned bugs or something like that? Uh, there is no such checklist available, <coughs> but uh, I could say for, uh, as Adenilson also mentioned on his uh, earlier talk, uh, the main focus now for, for both projects would be on performance. Because, uh, you know, HTML5 specification was finished last year. So uh, there are still some features to be implemented, of course, but uh, now, that the, now that it's finished, uh, the focus of every, every, everyone is getting the co uh, the code running faster on the mobile devices, on smart TVs, on tablets, desktops, and anywhere else. So for example, there is a huge uh, uh, focus on uh, accelerated compositing uh, in inside both WebKit and Blink, uh, some CSS optimizations as well, especially on the 3D transforms. Uh, so there is still a lot of work to be done, and uh, you can check from the commit, commit numbers per month. So WebKit has more than uh, 1,000 commits per month nowadays. Same applies for Blink, so uh, there is a lot happening at the moment. Yep. I wouldn't have specific numbers on that, but uh, I would say that's a very common practice, especially on the Blink side. Uh, one of the interesting things uh, that was happening in WebKit before the, the forking is that it was very usual for, uh, for you to see on the history uh, of comets uh, rollbacks made by Google developers. So uh, they usually send the patches, but uh, something was wrong, so they rolled back the patch and then uh, upload another patch again. Uh, this is very common practice. Uh, it's not rare to see a rollback patch but I wouldn't have the proper numbers for that. Anyone else? Well, uh, there are, of course, a lot of different things uh, to be uh, detailed in this presentation, but feel free to contact me after this. Uh, I, I have this, uh, you can find the slides on SlideShare, and uh, of course, you can contact me on the, on the conference. Thank you very much.